The autonomic nervous system causes the heart to feel safe enough to expand and breathe, and the, the immune system starts to upregulate and starts making all the healthy immune uh, immunoglobulins. And the digestive system says there's no threat, there's no danger. You know, people can eat the most organic diet in the world, but if they're living in vigilance and fear and, and self-judgment, that's not a time to digest. The body's believing there's a danger or threat out there. Are you with me still? And there's no blood in the internal organs. Enzymes shut down. And all of a sudden, the body says, hey, it's finally safe to repair, to restore, to regenerate. Are you with me still? And the autonomic nervous system processing a greater cadence, a greater rhythm, a greater order, is sending more orderly impulses to all the systems, organs, and tissues in the body. And so many people, the moment they connect to that field and they forget about themselves, and that autonomic nervous system rushes in, they were scheduled for surgery three days after the event. No pain in their body. They come back and it's completely gone. How many people understand? And they'll say to you, it wasn't me that did it, I swear to you. It wasn't me, it was, it was my, the power within me that did it. I just got out of the way. How many people understand? Let's go quantum for a few minutes, can we? Yes. Now don't shut down because I said quantum. Can you stay with me? Yes. So Einstein and Planck's. Planck, Planck and Einstein, two big nerds, right? They're hanging out just saying, hey, let's just, what are you doing on Saturday? Not, not much, what are you doing? Hey, why don't we just start getting some metals and putting the energy into and disturbing the electrons in those metals just to see if the electron behaves like an apple falling from a tree. That when an apple falls, it falls towards the center of a large body in a very smooth and continuous fashion. So let's see if the tiny world behaves like that. So they start disturbing the electrons and they expect it to, the electron to fall towards the nucleus of the atom the same way that the apple falls from the tree. And the, the electrons orbiting around the, the, the nucleus like planets rotating around the sun. Are you with me? They disturb the electrons and all of a sudden, instead of it moving in a smooth and continuous fashion, they disappear and they reappear. They disappear and they reappear. Instead of like a smooth, continuous fashion, like something, ro a ball rolling down a slope, it's more like a ball rolling down steps, gaining energy, losing energy, gaining energy, losing energy. And all of a sudden, the very tiny world of subatomic particles is not behaving like the very large world of planets and apples falling from trees. Are you with me still? So they go, let's take a closer look and try to measure these things. So when they go to measure the electron, the electron is existing, listen to this, in a wave function of probability, in an energetic field. It's not appearing yet. And the moment they start to measure and look for it, that energy literally collapses into a particle. It goes from energy to matter, from wave to particle. Are you with me still? But the timing of it, all of a sudden, they start to realize that their mind is having an effect on it, that the observer is collapsing the wave function in, into the material world. They take their attention off it, they no longer observe it. The moment they do that, once they take their attention off it, that particle moves back into energy, into, into the wave function, back into possibility, it could be anywhere. Are you with me still? So if you blow up the nucleus of the atom to the size of a Volkswagen bug, you got it? Yeah. Then the electron would be about the size of a pea. But where that P could exist would be the size of the state of Utah. That's how much space there is just for an atom. Are you with me still? That the atom is mostly energy and very little matter. Are you with me still? So subjective mind having an effect on the objective world that at that level, mind and matter are so connected that it's impossible to separate the two. Are you with me still? So this whole realm of quantum physics started to be born. And in every single quantum physics experiment, you need an observer present. Mind has to be present for it. Are you with me still? Now think about your life as a quantum experiment. If you're viewing your life from the same level of mind every single day, expecting the future based on the past, then you're collapsing infinite wave possibilities into the same patterns called your life. Yes or no? That's because your attention is on everything known. If your coworker, you expect them to show up the same, if your, or your place to be the same, everything to be the same in your life, then your life will appear the same. Yes or no? Now here's the question. 
If they take their attention off the electron and no longer observe it, and it turns into possibility, turns into energy, then the moment you become nobody, no one, no thing, nowhere, and no time, and you take all of your attention off all the elements in your life that is known, is it possible that your life will turn into possibility just like that electron turns into possibility? Yes or no? Let me say it another way. If you take your attention off of everything known and you disinvest your energy out of this three-dimensional reality into the unknown, into that realm of probability, that infinite blackness, it, the longer you linger in the unknown, the more you invest your attention and energy into the unknown, the more you should have new and unknown experiences in your life. Yes or no? So then in your meditation, as you broaden your focus and you sense the blackness, as you sense the space, that blackness has nothing physical or material there. Yes or no? The quantum field is an invisible field of energy, of frequency that's carrying information that exists beyond this space and time. Now you experience this space and time with your senses, yes or no? Come on. I said last night, if you take away your sight, your hearing, your smell, your taste, your feeling, you would have no connection to the three-dimensional reality, yes or no? So then your neocortex is the part of your brain that you use your senses to plug you into reality. So as you begin to dial down neural activity in your thinking neocortex, and you take your attention off your body, you have no attention on your body, you just went from a somebody to a nobody. Yes or no? Yes. But if you put a lot of attention on your body, it may take you a little bit of work to get beyond it. If you put a lot of attention on your pain, you gotta get beyond that, yes or no? Yes. And if you just have all these people in your life that you need around you to make you feel important, or you need attention from being you suffer with, then the moment you all of a sudden go from a someone to a no one, then you would have to disconnect and no longer have your attention on your identity that's connected to anybody in your life. Yes or no? Yes. And if you just stop thinking about your cell phone, your computer, your car, all the objects in your life, you would go from something to nothing. Yes or no? Yes. And if you're not thinking about where you're sitting, where you sleep, where you work, where you're from, you're gonna go from somewhere to nowhere. Yes or no? And if you're not thinking about the predictable future and the familiar past, and you're in the present moment, you're gonna go from some time to no time. Yes or no? And as you begin to slow down neural activity in your neocortex, and you're no longer having that brain activated that keeps you connected to all the associations that are known to you in your life, are you listening closely? Then it makes sense then that the moment you start changing your brain waves and moving into those slower frequencies, you're gonna forget about this three-dimensional world, and you're not even gonna be aware that you're in a room with people in a certain time and place, yes or no? Yes. So then if you're disinvesting all of your attention and energy out of the three-dimensional reality, and you take away all the bodies, all the people, all the objects, all the places and, and time, you take away the planets, all the moons and the planets, all the stars, all the lights from the stars, all the galaxies, you take everything, everything physical out of the universe, what are you left with? Just emptiness, a vacuum in quantum physics, that zero point field, the void, yes or no? But that field is rich in frequencies and you can experience them with your senses. You experience this reality with your senses. So as you dial down the neocortex, you shut off sensory function and you forget about yourself. You forget that you're local in space and time. Are you with me still? So then if you put your attention on that field, now listen closely, and its signature is order. The opposite of separation is wholeness, yes or no? So as you move closer and closer to it, it makes sense then you'll experience less separation and more connection, yes or no? And if you're experiencing more wholeness or more connection, it should be reflected in your brain and heart, yes or no? And if you're moving towards it, and I said to you, it's time to become nobody. No one, no thing, nowhere, and no time to become pure consciousness and to unfold as an awareness into this infinite black space and to invest all of your attention and energy into that unknown. And the longer you linger in the unknown, the more you create possibilities in your life. And if you, as the quantum observer, find your mind returning back to your body, to your emotions, to your pain, to your habits, to the people and objects and 
places in your known familiar reality to thinking about the predictable future or the familiar past. Simply become aware that your attention is back in the known in three-dimensional reality. Stop, pause, and return back into possibility. Stay present. Would you agree if you kept practicing that sooner or later, if you lock into a frequency, and I said you become aware, there's a frequency there of oneness. Find it. Feel it. Connect to it. Pay attention to it. Stay aware of it moment after moment after moment. If you could latch onto that unifying field, would you experience separation or more wholeness and order?